for dog on sure. I mean, he's starting to fall backwards. I don't think you're going to see these guys come down pit road now, but uh, you know, this track, man, the new tires are worth so much. It's not quite like you see it maybe at Darlington or somewhere like that, but it goes away pretty fast. Here comes some guys. And a few fakes and a few takers. Here comes the five car of Kyle Busch. He will come on to get uh, service. Casey Mears, his teammate, Casey Kane behind them. Let's check in with Dave. And Kyle Busch's car was a little bit tight on those runs. He said up top was a little bit better. I could loosen it up a bit, but they're going to make a chassis adjustment as well as a two tire <laughs> change for the five. Alan? And uh, the other Hendrick car, Casey Mears, is in this car with an extreme tight condition, meaning the front end is sliding in the corners. They're going to change two tires there, see if they can get a little farther up in the pack. Making some adjustments. Here comes the five car off of pit road. Mears comes down. Others, you see the 96 car. By the way, there was a little contact earlier between the 96 and the double zero for you David Rudeman fans. And Rudeman has been on and off of pit road, making some adjustments to a fender. And speaking of special stops on Pier 1, how about a special guest in our pit studio, Susie? Well, we just want to stress how rare it is for anyone outside of NASCAR to drive the pace car. That's Brett Bodine's <laughs> job, but actor Vince Vaughn had the opportunity today. How did this come about, first I, of all? I kept it at 10 and 2, did you notice? <laughs> Absolutely. I went, back, I went back to the uh, driver's education class. I kept it as simple as possible. <laughs> How'd you get this? I was just nervous I'd missed the pit turn. I knew if the car started flying by me, I went one lap too many. So I was just glad I got out of the way before the boys started racing. It's incredible to be down here. I was fortunate enough to be down there. You really can appreciate it watching on TV. When you come down and see it live, how close they are and the moves they're making, it's incredible. But it's a big deal. So how'd you feel? I was flattered to do it, no question. As I said, it was fun, and, and I had a guy, Buster, in the car who helped me with everything. Thank you, Buster. Um, what happens in the car stays in the car. Let's keep it <laughs> quiet. You know what I mean? I didn't panic, Buster. Uh, that's not quite the word I would use. No, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun to, fun to be out there. How did they wind up asking you? What's your history in terms of auto racing? No, I've always been a fan, and I was flattered, you know, to, to, to get a chance to come down, and, and, and especially here at Texas Motor Speedway, such a fast course. So uh, I think I, I have a movie coming out, so everything kind of worked in sync that I was able to come and participate today. Quick, get how the come you're not? How come you're not in the car? <laughs> Let's get you out in the car. I would love that. I bet you would. That's exciting. <laughs> you wouldn't even need Buster in the car. <laughs> Susan, you need this track up. Rubbin's racing. I like the way she handles her business. Vince, thanks for hanging out with us. Good to be with you. Doc? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did he have a grip on that steering wheel or what, guys? We have Vince Vaughn. Good to have him here visiting with us. Uh, and uh, obviously, well, just an outstanding actor, very entertaining, both uh, on the big screen and the small screen. I, th I think temporarily, Susie was speechless there just for a <laughs> second, Doc. That doesn't happen very often, but uh, that's great. She wants to get in that car. She'd be a good driver, too, that's for sure. Okay, let's show you where we're under caution for the third time today. Debris on the racetrack. Now, watch from Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s onboard camera. See the debris coming out from beneath, uh, oh, off the back of the 31 car. Whoops, he had a little contact there. Probably knocked one of the crush panels loose in the car. And right there it goes. And that's metal. And if you run over metal with a yeah. tire, it blows your tire out. So that was a good call. NASCAR throwing a caution for that problem. Absolutely. Safety number one priority here. Chevy Pace car takes a hard left, and uh, Martin Truex are fourth first-time pole center in 2007 will lead Kurt Busch, Jeff Gordon, Matt Kenseth, and Juan Pablo Montoya down to the green flag. Montoya getting a little racy back there, looking at a high set. Here goes uh, Kurt Busch on the bottom of the racetrack to try to take the lead away from Truex. And boy, in the top side, there's a lot of momentum up there. Truex got the lead back now with a lot of horsepower coming on that back straightaway out of that DEI engine. Right to the bottom of the racetrack. Now, guys, that's the fastest way around the track in the early going. Jamie? Well, Rusty, it's awfully competitive out there for Martin Truex Jr. He just came over the radio a couple seconds ago to his crew chief, Bono. This is what he said. Found a new line. I found a new line. Yeah, don't brag about it. The team continuing to work, guys. They want a win here in these chase races. They want to move the top ten in the points. So, hey, you found a new line. He's excited. Shh, don't tell anybody. Yeah, we just told eight, nine million people just then, so that's something. But don't look now. That number two car, that blue deuce of Kurt Busch, that thing was flying yesterday in practice. That team's really excited about their chances today. They think they got a good shot to win this thing. They brought a strong horse talking about the two car, the Penske car of Kurt Busch. Same car that dominated at Pocono, leading 175 of uh, 200 laps. They nicknamed the car the PT Special after a crew chief, Pat Thrasson, who assembled this car and made it a contender every time it's been on the racetrack. Got a few laps on the tires. Now you see that 42 car of Juan Pablo Montoya. 
kind of searching up the racetrack a little bit. That's where he got really good in that first run, was moving up on that top lane. Yeah, that last time by the speed, a 29.60 second lap. Oh, caution flag out in the racetrack, guys. Caution for the fourth time here. We just have 35 laps thus far. A little yellow fever here. Looks Another like piece of debris off of the Jeff Burton car again. Piece of sharp metal coming out from under the car. Looks like maybe he's losing a few more a few more panels out from under that car. Okay, guys, this isn't the same replay, is it? <laughs> he's just losing more metal. Here's the rest of it coming out right now. Whoa. Now that's definitely the side panel behind the right rear tire that seals off everything to the fuel cell area. Jeff Burton, the only two-time winner at Texas Motor Speedway, losing parts and pieces here early on today. Under caution for the fourth time. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the Dickies 500. Pit stops the order of the day under caution number four. Let's go down to Mike Massaro. And Doc, on Matt Kenseth's first pit stop, he made a two-tire change, went with right sides this time, another two-tire change, but this time the left sides. Jamie? And Martin Truex Jr. saying he's a little bit tight. Air pressure adjustment, four tires. And Martin Truex is down and away. Jamie Johnson, left side tires going on. The current cup champion, second points. A little frustrating a head shake by a couple of guys on that crew. Here's the race off of pit road. Kenseth up a spot. Remember, he only took those two left side tires. Kurt Busch back one. David Gillen, good job for the Yates team. Up four positions. Working caution for the fourth time a day here. As Jeff Gordon is the leader, here is the 31 car of Jeff Burton as they're pulling some of that sheet metal away. Remember, he had that little contact with the wall. He's been losing some parts and pieces, and that's the reason they've had uh, the last two caution flags because of debris out of the back of this Chevrolet. And we've got a few, uh, got a neat little thing developing right here because some of these guys pitted about four laps ago under that last caution, and they stayed out here. So we've got this field shuffled. It's going to be interesting when we go green. Jeff Burton will be down and away. We'll come back with a restart at Texas in just a moment. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. Under caution for the fourth time of day. Many of the cars came on the pit road. The top five cars did not pit. Jeff Gordon, Juan Pablo Montoya, Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., and J.J. Yaley stayed on the racetrack. As the green flag waves, Gordon will lead him back down. Andy, you shook your head when you say Gordon did not come in. Why? I think it's a bad, bad uh, call right there because they have. he's still got the same left side tires he started the race on. These other guys... Uh, you know, Kyle Busch, some of these guys behind just pitted. They got four tires. And then the last, this last stop, the rest of the field got four tires. So he's got the worst tires in the field right now. Well, Andy, I got to agree with you. I don't think that was a good call not putting four tires on. Uh, I believe his car looked awful tight to me. It looks like he could run for four or five laps. And then the front end would take off on him. He was falling backwards. I was just getting ready to say before the crash happened, he is running four tenths of a second slower than the top three guys. So it's yet to be seen what's going to happen with him. This five car right here has got four tires that he got, you know, back on lap 31 when we had that yellow. So he's got good tires, better tires than the 42 and a lot better tires than the 24. This is third and fourth position. Looking back from Kevin Harvick, who's in second spot. As you see Kyle Busch going by, taking the third spot away. Harvick has not led today. He would like to get up there and catch Jeff Gordon and get those five bonus points for leading a lap. And how about the eight car? Dale Earnhardt Jr. now moving in. He's in the fifth spot, moving in on Montoya for four. And he was really happy with his car yesterday in practice. Dale Jr. was. He was. He said, I can work the bottom of the track, the middle of the track, the top. Although, he's our interest reporter, and he told us he's got to be a little careful off the corners. He can be very cautious running that high lane like he's used to running. 41 of 334 laps in the books. Jeff Gordon did not pit. His last pit stop was on lap 17. Folks, let's listen to the radios. Caution's are saving us because we're pretty decent for a couple laps. It just gets way too tight, right? All on throttle. You know, down there, three and four, it's before I pick up the throttle. Down here, one and two, seems like it turns pretty good for me um, until I pick up the throttle. And that was the, the discussion under the caution flag just a moment ago between Jeff Gordon and his crew chief, Steve Letarte. Now, Jeff Gordon got track position. He's leading. He's in clean air. Jimmy Johnson, meanwhile, got four tires. He's way back in 27th position and a lot more in the danger zone right now if something should happen on the racetrack. Now, Steve Letarte tells me it's going to be track position all day for their strategy. 
Well, you can't beat track position, that's for sure, as long as your car's handling good. So, Jeff Gordon's looking good in a moment, but that, that change of not putting anything on, not changing anything at all, Andy, that's still got me concerned. Well, the other thing he's got to worry about is if this thing stays green, he's going to have to pit for fuel a lot sooner than the rest of these guys. Now, that is a major concern right there. When you're out there in a racetrack and you've got to pit for fuel and they're, they're going, you're going to go laps down, and that's a tough one. Back here, back, that's Casey Mears who pitted the nine car back there as well. Casey Kane. J.J. Yaley, one of the cars that did not come on the pit road. Remember back in the spring, guys, when uh, Jimmy Johnson was caught in an accident early on because he was back in traffic and he ended up getting a 38th place finish? That's what Alan Bessick was alluding to, is that Jimmy Johnson right now is mired back in 25th position. Meanwhile, up front, Kyle Busch. You talked about the four fresh tires the five car has. He's gone by the 29 and now sets his sights on his teammate, Jeff Gordon. I'm still real surprised that this 24 car is able to stay out in front of these guys with the tires he's got. This five car's got four brand new tires, about 15 laps newer. I'm surprised that Gordon's able to hold this lead. More on Kevin Harvick. Let's check in with Mike Massar. You know, Doc, I spoke with Harvick's crew chief, Todd Barrier, this morning. He says whenever they come to a mile and a half racetrack, they're always a little bit leery, but this weekend they have reason for optimism. We'll get to that in a minute, but there's a battle for the lead shaping up right now as Kyle Busch sweeps by Jeff Gordon. Yeah, not much of a battle at all because Gordon couldn't do much. Kyle Busch just went flying, went sailing right by. Well, he was really screaming. Now, take a look at Kevin Harvick on top of the racetrack right there. That was our winner yesterday in the Bush Series event. And, Mike, he looked really good yesterday. And, and that's pretty much what I talked to Todd Barrier about. That's the reason they're so optimistic. Todd told me any time that Kevin runs well in a Bush car, it seems to really translate to his cup car. He even looked historically into his record books. He said when he won the 2001 and 2006 Bush Series championships, those were his best years in the cup cars. And statistically, that's true. Those are the only two years he had multiple Nextel Cup wins. Now, as you alluded to, he won yesterday. He's looking for the weekend sweep. If he picks up the weekend sweep, that'll be the fifth time in his career he's done that. That would be a new NASCAR record. Kevin Harvick's sixth Bush win of the season yesterday. 32nd career win, which is a landmark for him because it's him second all time in Bush career wins. NASCAR Bush Series career wins behind only Mark Martin. Right now, those four tires for Kyle Busch are really working. He's just flat sailing out there. About three-tenths of a second faster at the moment than Jeff Gordon. And really, Kevin Harvick's only about a tenth of a second faster. It's probably a matter of time before he finally does get around Gordon. Looks like they got this five car fixed up pretty good. He, he tagged the wall a little bit in practice yesterday, and the guys had to work on it and kind of straighten it back out. But they've got it fixed pretty good, it looks like. Yeah, I walked past her yesterday, Andy, and they had the spindles off it. They were beating the fenders out. And Dave, that was a tore-up car yesterday. The five car right now of uh, Kyle Busch, Rusty, leading this race. And after yesterday finishing second, I had a chance to check in with crew chief Alan Gustafson this morning. He said, after the race yesterday, I had a good 20-minute debrief with Kyle. We had a contentious day. We didn't win the race. But we reasoned that we had a good race car today, and we worked on how to make it better for today, both communication-wise and mechanically. And so far, they're doing well, now leading this race. Left side of your screen, Jimmy Johnson going by the 0-7 of Clint Boyer. And here goes the 29 of Harvick by the 24 of Jeff Gordon. Harvick we talking about, you just heard a moment ago, how when he has a good day in the Bush car, he has a really good day in the cup car the next day. That might be working for him because he won yesterday and now running second today. Here is Jimmy Johnson continuing his march back toward the front. 48 car now going by Tony Raines to take away the 20th position. And Boyer, by the way, uh, how good is Clint Boyer hanging right there in third spot? And folks, with the right things happening, Boyer's way today, he could leave here as the points leader. Well, Jerry, he's doing the same thing he's done all year long. He's consistent. He's working on his car every practice session, every pit stop, and right now the car looks good. Johnson's a little bit quicker than him right now, but Boyer's doing what he's got to do, just hanging in there at the moment. Seems like that's what Boyer's done all year, and in this chase especially, he's just hanging right in there. And these guys have been good. Kyle Busch setting sail in the five car. We knew the Hendrick cars would be good. We thought it would be 48 and 24, but here's the five car at the front of the field as he was late a week ago at Atlanta, but it didn't work his way. Maybe he's going to make up for it today here. Lap 52 complete. Kyle Busch, a leader. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Beautiful aerial shots from high above Texas Motor Speedway, courtesy of our good friends at Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. 
helping NASCAR drivers get to the finish line for over 50 years. This broadcast is available in Spanish by activating your SAP button presented by ESPN Deportes. Listen to the Spanish coverage of our NASCAR Nextel Cup chase for the Cup here at Texas Motor Speedway. Let's take you up to speed here on the leaders as we head down uh, and listen.